class. We're no longer as obsessed by it as in the 1970s, but outdated concepts of upper, middle and lower class persist. In the feudal pyramid, the king was at the top, then the nobility, knights and peasants. The church reinforced these rigid classes through sermons. Feudalism ended gradually as the Black Death first killed many peasants, giving the rest more power, then a market economy developed, and finally Parliament killed the king in the English Civil War. Karl Marx thought the English Civil War was a revolution by the bourgeoisie who took power from the aristocracy. He sweepingly claimed the history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles. He thought that after the bourgeoisie overthrow the nobility, then the proletariat, industrial workers, would overthrow the bourgeoisie, and a socialist utopia with no state or classes would spring up. He claimed this utopia would pop up in every country and be the end of history. Needless to say, his claims were completely wrong. For example, the English nobility still held great power two centuries after the Civil War, and in countries like Russia, the dictatorship of the proletariat turned out to be just a dictatorship. The state did not disappear, but intruded suffocatingly on every aspect of life, and the secret police imprisoned dissenters informed upon by their neighbours. Furthermore, the free classes which Marx proposed were grossly simplified in the mid-19th century, but are now near irrelevant in the 21st. For example, neither domestic servants, nor professionals, nor those who charge rent, rentiers, fit into the aristocracy, bourgeoisie, or proletariat. Disraeli, the conservative PM from 1874 to 1880, on the other hand, had a genuine sympathy for the poor. He wrote that there were two nations between whom there is no intercourse and no sympathy, the rich and the poor. He sought to remedy the bad working conditions of industrial labours <coughs> <coughs> by encouraging the wealthy to assist the poor. So he passed the Conspiracy and Protection of Property Act 1875 which decriminalised trade unions and so improved labourers' lives. At the heart of One Nation conservatism is the idea that the nation is one great family, which, compared to bloody class conflict, is a more positive, compassionate vision. <laughs>